Hello and welcome to lesson 23.6 in the Python tutorial series. Today we're going to be continuing what we started in lesson 23.5, which is list methods and how to manipulate your lists in your program. Now, the last lesson we looked at append and extend and different uh, ways to add information to your list and how to pull information out of your list using say, uh, the pop method or re the remove method. So we'll continue that today and look at some more sorting features like how to sort your list alphabetically or numerically, how to randomize your list, uh, how to count the number of objects in your list and different things like that. Uh, these become really useful when you do things say like a game and you want to know how many of an object appear in a list. It's possible that the user could have two healing potions, a hundred healing potions, or none at all. And so we want to be able to write programs that allow us to easily count items in the list in addition to manipulating and pulling things out. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 23.6, the continuation of list methods. So here we are back in our Python shell, and since I've closed Python since the last video, uh, we don't have our colors variable that we used. So let's reinitialize a uh, colors variable, and this is going to be a list variable that will have the string red, blue, yellow, white, and then a second copy of blue. So we have our colors variable, and inside the colors, whoops, colors variable, we have a list value with red, blue, yellow, white, and then a second iteration of blue. Now it is possible that the order of this list is important. That's why we have a method called sort. What sort will do is take these colors and alphabetize them for us. So if we said colors.sort and then took a look at our colors variable, we can see that they get alphabetized. Blue, blue, red, white, and yellow. If I had a list of numbers, so let's say I have numbers equals 1, 5, 9, 17, 4, 7, and 1. If I take a look at the numbers variable, then I, I have a list of numbers as opposed to strings. And if I numbers.sort that, you can see that those are put in numerical order. So it follows the exact same rules that we talked about really early in this uh, tutorial series, keeping in mind that Python does treat capital letters and lowercase letters differently. So if you have lower, a mixture of uppercase letters and lowercase letters, you might see some uh, funniness in the way that it gets alpha alphabetized by sort. But sort is a method that you can use on your lists to sort the list from smallest to largest or alphabetically if you so choose. Now going back to our list of colors here, I might want to add a new color. Let's say I want to add neon green. When we use append or extend, it always adds to the end of the list. There are times though when I'm going to want to add information somewhere in a list other than to the end. There is a, a final, um, I guess, manipulation list method that we can use or a, a method that will change the list itself, and that's insert. If I were to say colors.insert, I have to provide two arguments for this. I have to provide an integer, which is going to be the index that I want the object added to, and then what I actually want added. So let's say I wanted to add neon green, but I wanted it to appear between blue and red. Well, this is index location 0, 1, and 2. So I want neon green to occupy index location 2. So I'm going to insert an index location 2, neon green. When I take a look at colors now, I can see that neon green was added to index location number 2, and then everything else was shifted over to the right. The insert method is very useful when the order of your list matters, and that allows you to insert things at a given location within your list. Now between lesson 23.5 and 23.6, we've talked about a bunch of list methods, and these are all modification methods. That is, they make changes to the list. When we add or remove an object, the list is changing when we're sorting it, when we're reversing it. The content of the list itself is changing, either by adding items or manipulating the order in which everything appears. 
The next two methods that we're going to look at are not modification methods. That is, they don't make any changes to the list itself. They simply return information about the list. The list methods we're going to be looking at are the list.count and the list.index to either return how many objects of a certain type show up in a list or the index location of the first occurrence of an object within a list. So just keep in mind as we look at these next two methods, they're not going to change the contents of the list. Now in looking at this list right here, I can see that you know, we have some objects in there. And if I wanted to return how many times does red appear in my list, I'm going to use colors.count and then provide the argument. I can see that I'm getting a return value of 1 from count.red. Now if I look at the colors variable, there's been absolutely no changes. Colors.count is simply returning information about our list without manipulating the list itself. So if I were to colors.count blue, I'm going to get a return value of 2 because blue appears twice. If I try and count a color that doesn't exist, let's say I try and count brown, I'm simply going to get a 0. Colors.count is a very useful method, particularly when, using, when uh, working with inventories inside the programs that you write. We can also check index locations by doing colors.index, and then let's see what the index location of neon green is. I get a return value of 2 for neon green, that's because neon green occupies index location 2. If I were to do colors.index yellow, I'm going to get a return value of 5 because yellow occupies index location 5. Keep in mind though that colors.index returns only the first occurrence. So if I did colors.blue, I would get a return value of 0 since blue occupies index location 0. It will never check the second blue because we've already found the index location of the first occurrence of blue. And finally, if I were to colors.index brown, or an item that doesn't exist, I am going to get an error here. Brown is not in the list. So if I try and find colors.index of a color that doesn't exist, it will cause a value error in my program and, and stop it from running. If I try and count something that isn't there, we can return a zero. But if I try and get the index location of something that's not in the list, it is going to cause our program to crash. Now as far as important methods go that are built into to Python, for list manipulation, that's a pretty solid list right there. But there is one other that I use quite a bit, and it's not part of base Python, it's actually part of the random module. And so in order to use it, we're going to need to import random. So I'm going to import random into shell so that I can use this. And the way you call this is random.shuffle and then provide your list. Now this is gonna be a little bit different. Everything we've done so far, we put in the name of the list dot the method that we wanted to run. The shuffle method is part of the random module. So instead of starting with the name of the list variable, we're going to start with the name of the module we're calling from, in this case, random. The method we're going to run is shuffle, and we are going to apply that to our colors variable. Before we do that, let's go ahead and just print out what the colors variable looks like. So we got blue, blue, neon, green, red, white, and yellow. And so if I do random.shuffle and provide a list variable as an argument, in this case colors, and then take a look at colors, you can see I'm going to get a random ordering of every item inside the list. So if I random.shuffle colors again, take a look at the value of colors, I get blue, white, neon, green, red, blue, and yellow. So every time I run random.shuffle, it's going to take my list and just throw it into a randomized order. Uh, there is one final thing that I want to look at, though it's not necessarily a list method, it is uh, something that's worth noting, particularly as we start talking about working with inventories, and that's the in command. Uh, we've used the in command with uh, strings to see if like a certain letter appears in a string. We can also do that with lists. 
So if I take a look at, you know, my colors list here, I've got blue, white, neon, green, red, blue, and yellow. I can ask Python to check, is blue in colors? And this will return true. When evaluating a list value, whatever this is right here, so this is the string blue, it will look through the list to see if any element of the list matches this argument right here. So blue in list returns true because blue does show up in the list. You know, similarly, yellow in colors will return true, but brown in colors will return false. Now this is really similar to the count method. In fact, you could use the count method uh, in the same way that you do this. So if I said colors.count blue, I would get a value of two. And since it's not zero, I know for a fact that their colors does exist in the list. Or if I were to say colors.count brown, as we did earlier, I'm getting a zero, meaning that it's not in the list. So this uh, string in list format here is very similar to count, but it returns a Boolean value. And it's pretty useful when you just want to know true or false is an object in the list I don't care how many times it shows up in the list, I just want to know, is it in the list at all? Uh, using the in keyword is a good way to check to see if something exists inside your list. And that there is going to cover the important list methods. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, and we'll do this in lesson 23.7, is pulling random items from a list, because that's something that you're going to want to do a lot if you're making like simple adventure games. For example, you might have a treasure chest that has a 10 random items in it, and the user only gets one or maybe two of them. So pulling random items from a list can be a very important skill. Now that we have the ability to add objects to our list and remove objects from our list and count objects and things like that, randomization seems like a natural next step. Now we're almost getting to project number six and project number six will be uh, a short adventure game that keeps a realistic inventory for the user. So we're definitely getting there, but uh, we want the ability to randomize uh, objects from our list for the user and that will be the topic of 23.7. So thank you so much for watching and supporting the Python tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions about how to use any of the list methods that you saw in this video, uh, or something's just not working out for you, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, I'll see you next time as we look at how to pull random items from a list. Thanks and have a great day.